All right, uh, welcome back. In the previous videos, we discussed, uh, you know, how the stabilization policy works, okay, according to the Keynesian economics. Uh, it looks like, you know, it, they will work perfectly, right? We can put um, the output back to its potential level. We can lower the overall price level if necessary right so um you might be under the impression that you know we should just do it right it, it looks so great um but you know that is not true i mean everything um no matter how beneficial it is will come with a cost right so for uh the stabilization policy uh, it's going to be the same, okay? It has uh, its strength and weaknesses, okay? So here we're going to talk about the weaknesses or problems or concerns with these uh, uh, stabilization policies, okay? Now, uh, we still uh, will look at the four cases uh, which we discussed before, okay? Um, but here, I will only talk about uh, two of them uh, in this video and leave the other two for you guys to figure out by yourself. Okay? And uh, later, you can bring your work um, to class and we will discuss uh, the other two. Okay? All right, so here, uh, the first thing is uh, we're going to talk about is the economy without the government intervention. Okay. In other words, we said that you know the stabilization policy uh, would work just like you know the medication we will take when we get sick, right? So um, in our study here, uh, the first thing we want to make sure is if you know the patient does not take any medication, what could happen? Okay like what could be the worst case scenario right uh, so it's the same thing here if you know without any fiscal or monetary policies what's going to happen to this economy okay all right so the case number one is uh the asset price falls sharply as i said uh, i'm not going to talk about these uh you guys uh should you know uh, you know, based upon the our discussion of other cases here in this video, you should be able to do the case number one by yourself, okay? And you can bring your answers to the class and uh, we will walk through that, okay? Uh, so here, let's go ahead and talk about the case number two, uh, which is, you know, the confidence of the consumers and investors uh, rises too much. Okay, somehow they just become, you know, very optimistic, probably over optimistic about the uh, future of the economy. Okay, so they uh, spend too much okay, uh, consume, on consumption and investment. And um, in the previous video, we already uh, said that because of this um, overconfidence, um, there would be a rightward shift of aggregate demand curve. So the economy will end up with a expansion and inflation. Okay, So it's going to produce more than its potential level, and the overall price level would be higher okay, than the um, long-term equilibrium level. All right. Now, what's going to happen next? That's what we're going to figure out here. Okay, so suppose right now the economy is operating at point A. What's going to be the next stop of this economy, right? As we said before, because point A, you know, or the YA, which is output level uh, at point A, stays above the Y bar, which is a potential GDP, right? And... Um, as we said before, this is not sustainable. Okay, I believe uh, back in um, chapter, uh, I think when we talk about unemployment, right? Uh, we talk about the natural rate of unemployment. We also talk about potential GDP, right? We said if the actual uh, output level goes above the potential level, 
we don't believe it's sustainable in the long term, right? Now here, we're going to talk about why it's not sustainable, okay? So for example, when the economy um, produces at point A, um, that means, you know, they already use the productive resources um, a lot, okay? In other words, probably overuse these resources. Let's use labor as an example, okay? So when the economy is at point A, um, the economy is actually pretty hot, okay? It produced a lot. So it could, at some point, run short of labor, okay? Um, during this process, you would find that, you know, the workers would like to ask a higher wage, okay? Uh, because now the market is really on the worker side, right? It's the supply side market. So they would ask a higher wage and the firms are, you know, in a fierce competition uh, on the market to get the workers they need. So they have to beat up the wage. Okay. Now, when the wage becomes higher and higher, uh, firms would find that, well, it's probably not that profitable uh, to produce. Okay. At least some of them uh, would start cutting back their production. Now, that's why here we're going to shift the short run aggregate supply curve to the left. Okay. Again, this is pretty much consistent with what we discussed before. Okay. An increase in the input price would lead to a leftover shift of the short run aggregate supply curve. Okay. Here we just use the labor as an example, but the same thing, the same logic reasoning could apply, uh, could be applied to other productive resources. For example, natural resources, right? When the economy is overheated, probably we're going to run short of uh, coal, for example, precious metals. Okay. And um, so again, uh, eventually we're going to see uh, the SRAS shifts to the left. Now, because of that leftover shift, we're going to find that the overall price level would be even higher. Okay, so we end up on the graph PB right here. Um, the output level would go back to the original level, which is a potential GDP. Okay, and so here we find. Um, you know, in the long run, okay, or um, the, the economy, you know, moving from the E bar to A and eventually to B. And so when we compare the E bar and B, you know, the starting and the ending points, we find that the level of the output remains the same, okay, the potential GDP, but the overall price level is going to be higher, okay, so we're going to see a higher inflation here in this case, all right. Now, um, the next one, uh, the case number three is uh, oil price falls sharply. Again, um, I will, uh, I, I'm going to talk about this one uh, in this video. Okay. And the case number four, it's the opposite case. The oil uh, prices uh, rise sharply. So I'm going to leave that for you guys to do. Um, and um, please bring your work to our discussion. Okay. Now, as we said before, uh, case number three, let's revisit that one. Uh, the oil price falls sharply, so it's going to be cheaper to produce, right? And the firms would like to increase their um, short run supply. So there's a rightward shift of the SRAS, and um, we find that the economy is moving from the E bar to A, okay, the point A, which is right here. and uh, and um, Oops. That means um, we're going to see an expansion in deflation, right? Um, but, you know, along this process or this, this rightward shift of the SRAS, um, it could continue happening this way, right? Like we further shift this uh, short long supply curve to the right until one point, as we said before, the economy is running out of the uh, productive resources, okay? For example, labor, right? And um, 
the workers would like to ask a higher wage and the firms got to make a more generous offer to be able to hire you know the the um, candidates they want okay and uh, so some firms start realizing that you know it's not profitable producing with such a high labor cost so they're going to cut back their production when we see more and more firms are doing that this means we have to put the SRAS back uh, to the original level. In other words, a left or shift of the short run aggregate supply curve. Okay? Now, if that happens, then the economy is moving from point A back to E bar. Okay? So the overall price level goes back to the original level and the output goes back to the potential level. Okay. All right, and um, so you can you can figure out the difference between this one and the one um, on the previous slide, right? Again, following the same logic, um, um, you're encouraged to finish uh, case number three by yourself. Okay. All right. In this case, we find that you know um, when we compare the original uh, situation E bar and the the final situation which is also e bar exactly same point right so uh, the output and the inflation remains exactly the same okay there's no difference at all right now um the two cases we just discussed or the um reasoning we just um, discussed is called the self-correction mechanism okay acm self-correction mechanism says that you know the government intervention is not always necessary okay as we just saw you know the economy especially from the output level it will go back to its original like potential level even without the, the fiscal or monetary policies okay so this argument um, or, or this idea um, is um, if you you know um, recall what we discussed uh, you would find that when we talk about the SCM we always uh, focused upon the adjustment of the short run aggregate supply okay in other words we're saying that you know because of the uh, rising price of productive uh, resources or uh, factors of production the firms would make adjustment uh, of their production accordingly okay if the factor price is too high they're going to produce less if the factor price is too low they're going to produce more right so this um, is the adjustment of the SRAS uh, which is uh, often you know um, used by the supply side economist okay supply side eco economics means um, when they analyze the uh, business cycles or macroeconomic cycles they often focused more upon the supply side in other words sras okay instead of the aggregate demand uh, or ad okay like a keynesian economist would do all right and um, of course, here, you know, for the SCM, uh, Keynesian economists would fire back. Okay, they don't believe these. They're going to question um, the supply side economists how long will the SCM take? Okay, if it's, for example, several weeks or one or two months, it might be okay, right? And um, however, if it takes for example, six months or even longer, okay, um, or even several years, for example, then uh, it's going to be a problem, right? Um, so here, the short run versus long run uh, becomes the center of the discussion, okay? And um, this reminds us the quote we mentioned at the beginning of the uh, chapter, you know, uh, we are all dead in the long run, right? Now here again, uh, it's the unemployment rate during the Great Depression. As you can see, it actually took uh, almost ten years for the unemployment rate to fall. 